let's get back to our home state, California. <laughs> and before we talk about the uh, few of the pieces here that are beyond rare, no Pioneer Gold collection is complete without the famous $50 slugs. And, and there's some fantastic examples. You want to tell us, before we get into a couple of the really rare pieces, uh, about the $50 gold slug. That's that's always a favorite, been a favorite of mine. And Interesting enough, we don't know why the government came up with the idea of a $50 gold slug. We know that there was a lot. Gold was discovered in January 1848. Uh, within a year, there was a lot of agitation by the merchants to, hey, we need some money here. We need some medium of exchange. We can't continue to use this gold dust. So uh, while individuals started to, in the eight, middle 1849, to start issuing their own coins, there was agitation to the federal government to establish a mint in California. But there was a lot of jealousies with New York and Philadelphia, who had the only mint. It took them six years to create a San Francisco branch mint in San Francisco. So in the meantime, uh, finally, in 1851, the government uh, had a, made a compromise in Congress. We'll, we'll have a new, we'll appoint an assayer to bring out dyes for a $50 gold piece that could circulate for money in California. And they came up with this $50 gold piece with an eagle on it and, and the, the engine turning like on a, a watch at the time. So they brought out the, the dyes and my name is Augustus Humbert, was appointed the U.S. assayer, and they started issuing these $50 gold pieces, and they issued hundreds of thousands of them. I mean, they issued a lot, and they were used in commerce. And today, they epitomize the whole field of Pioneer Gold. Two and a half ounces of gold, $50, used in gambling, casinos, and trade, whatever. Unfortunately, the government, in its infinite wisdom, forgot to authorize lower denominations <laughs> for over a year. There was only the 50s. There were no 20s, 10s, 5s. So they were difficult to use, but nevertheless, they did widely circulate. The $50 gold slug used in the casinos, the bars, for who knows what. I see your 50 and raise you 50. <laughs> I would like to say that with a $50 yeah. slug. Uh, ha how amazing these coins are. Uh, and let's talk about a few of the really mega rarities. There's a Massachusetts and California piece. I think, David, help me here, four known? Three or four, yeah. Three or four known, just, uh, I'm sure they'll put it up on and the screen. And that's far and away the finest. There's just, no comparison. Uh, the MS-63 in, in, in this collection, uh, absolutely the finest I've ever seen. Um, Brand collection, yes. and then uh, from the, the famous Clifford, brand collection, then Clifford, Clifford Kagan. Kagan. and exquisitely toned. That's uh, one of the most attractively toned gold coins I've ever seen. And then, of course, we have one of the most famous coins, and we'll put a picture up on the screen for you: the uh, Baldwin Cowboy. Don, could you? Yeah, the Vaquero Cowboy was uh, <laughs> used, and this is from the Baldwin Company. Unfortunately, they didn't last very long. One of the rivals to Baldwin and Company in 1849 was a man by the name of James King of William. And he was also a, a muckraker, but we believe in cahoots with another company like Moffin and Company and Augustus Humbert, the assayer, um, the original assayer. He sent the coins, the Baldwin coins and some other early pioneer gold producers, their coins to, were sent in to be assayed. And then the results were published in a newspaper showing that many of these coins were not worth what they purported to be. Instead of being worth $10, they were only worth $8 of gold. Or, or, and then some of them were almost worth gold, but had silver in it, but they didn't account for the silver, which actually brought maybe it up to, to the $10. But by that time, people thought, oh, all of these private gold coins were debased, and they sent them in to be melted, and then they called, there was uh, scathing editorials about the swindle the Baldwin and Company was, was creating with these debased coins, and uh, the next thing you know, Baldwin's kicked out of town. So um, they didn't last very long, but they're very colorful and interesting. As I uh, started 
at the beginning, I, I said it was a, a privilege for PCGS to grade these incredible coins. We did put them at, uh, at uh, Don and his client's request in our special new uh, PCGS of your holder. So we, obviously, we took images of the coins. The images will be up on CoinFAQ. Many of these are conditioned since its examples, which we've listed as such uh, among the finest known for the particular coins, again, on PCGS CoinFAQ. Uh, Don and David, it's just uh, a pleasure uh, to grade the coins and for you mm -hmm. to uh, share this fabulous collection with us and uh, allow us to put up online for the world to see. Right, thank you very much. We've enjoyed it. It was our pleasure.